ja, pretty cool. This episode is brought to you by GoDeals24.com. Are you annoyed by that nasty Windows 10 activation watermark? Well, GoDeals24 has you covered. GoDeals offers a variety of software activation keys for things like Windows 10 Pro or Microsoft Office for a ridiculously affordable price. And right now you can also use the promo code YTB20 for a 20% discount on Windows or YTB50 for a 15% discount on Office in order to push the price even lower. And don't forget that the activation will stay active once you update to Windows 11. So if you want to get that nasty activation watermark away, make sure to head down to the links in the description below and don't forget to use the promo code to get the best price. This is Cooler Master's newest addition to their AIO liquid cooler lineup, the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240 Illusion. It's got the latest and greatest upgraded third generation dual chamber pump, slightly extended radiator fins and a translucent water block pump cover stuffed with so much RGB even unicorns are obliged to follow its commands. But let's stop repeating all of these buzz PR words and go over the feature that I was actually able to see. This is the Master Lucid ML240. It exists in two different sizes, 360mm with three fans and 240 with two. The smaller one can also be bought in a white edition, which is the exact one I have here. The fans used on this water cooler are the Cooler Master MF120 Halo fans, pushing around 47.2 CFM at 1.6mm of H2O while spinning at 1800 RPM. I would call the performance sufficient, but that's reserved for the benchmark section. Ignoring all of the other buzzwords, these Halo fans also got some sort of jam protection. And I, I really do not want to stab them with a screwdriver, so let's just take this like you would take a city stop function in a car. Nice to have, but I wouldn't try it out. But the beauty of these lie within their RGB implementation. While the central wing part of the fan illuminates in one way, the four outer rings, which are seeable from the front, side and back, can be controlled separately. So you could make the ring around go in RGB rainbow spin while the inner piece just stays white, or any other combination of your choice. All of this is made possible by Cooler Master's proprietary ARGB Gen 2 Lightning. But that's a whole topic which we will cover in a minute. Getting back to the all-in-one, the, in my case, 277mm long radiator is 27.2mm thick with two 350mm long tubes attached to it. Although I found the tubes to be at least 50mm too short, I have to give Cooler Master credit for the nice looking tube sleeves they used on here, as well as, of course, the, all the cables and splitters. On the other side of the tubes, we will find Cooler Master's water block with their third generation pump on top. Although there is not much known about the pump, I can only say that this thing is, is dead silent. Just like the fan, this thing got some, in, in, in my opinion, amazing looking RGB, but there is a slight catch. While the black version of this all-in-one got a clear see-through plastic around the water block with the actual RGB part being like a couple of millimeters behind, the white version uses milky plastic creating a design which looks like the RGB part is like directly on the edge. I'm not saying A or B looks better, I'm just saying they look different. But Damn, this looks good. Now, you might have noticed that the Cooler Master logo is not straight. I have noticed too. Initially, while writing the script, I even prepared a short section calling out the quality control because of the person gluing these things on there. But while proofreading the marketing material of the ML240 and filtering out all the unnecessary buzzwords, this is supposed to be rotatable. I really don't know how they intended for anybody to be able to rotate this as there is really nothing to grab or push, but by using something very thin and performing an action which I can only describe as horrific, it turned out that the inner section is just a pop cover which can be popped back in place in the orientation of your choice. Great feature, but you could have disclosed it a, a bit better. On the other hand, you should not have disclosed the translucidness of the Cooler Master logo on there as much as you did. In, in no world is it as see-through as the image suggests. Now, how about the compatibility? Funnily enough, it's surprisingly backwards compatible. For Team Intel, we are looking at the newest LGA 1200, 2011, 2066 and every 1150 socket. For AMD, they got the newest AM4 going back to AM3+, AM3 and so on until you reach the older AM2 and FM1 socket. In order to install the water block, it's a very 
pleasant experience. For Intel, mount the Intel brackets onto the water block. For AGL 250 you also have to put the backplate in place, screw in the spacers, add some thermal paste and screw the sucker down with the thumb screws. For AMD almost everything is already prepared. Just screw in the AMD brackets, use some thermal paste and clip it down and just make sure to tighten these screws really tight. So that was it for the block itself. The cabling is a whole other thing with good and bad sides. For power, it's pretty straightforward. 4-pin PVM for both fans with an included PVM slitter and the pump uses a 3-pin. Pretty easy and standard. For the RGB, the fans as well as the block use some proprietary connection. This sucks, but once you use the included splitter slash adapter, you will end up with a standard 3-pin ARGB. And this is also the moment where the whole Cooler Master ARGB Gen 2 comes into play. After connecting the splitter to this little thing, hooking it up to SATA power and a USB header on your motherboard, you can proceed by installing Cooler Master Master Plus. But don't just scroll down on Cooler Master's website to get to downloads. I, I don't know what Master Plus PER only is, but it, it just doesn't work. You need the real deal from masterplus.coolermaster.com because Clicking on download on your index page just makes too much sense. But once everything is installed, I, I really must say it's a pretty powerful program. You might like apps like this or NZXT Cam, or you don't, but comparing to what used to exist, these are, are really, really good. As the Halo fans and Pump on here are both accepted as an ARGB Gen 2 device, you are able to control every single light with different modes or address each LED individually, including these on the inner and outer circle of the fans. And what shocked me even more is that while using a splitter, a 1 to 3 splitter, Master Plus is still able to detect every individual light. You might also have noticed that because we are using a splitter, there are two ARGB headers left on the Master Plus controller. Well, these can still be used. Just hook another fan in there and start controlling it. If it's not a Cooler Master ARGB Gen 2 device, you will only be able to use the standard ARGB mode, but I would still call this expandable. But one thing that I really need to mention is, yes, it is compatible with every ARGB device, but sneaky little Cooler Master has really slim ARGB headers. I was able to hook an Acer Hurricane to it by using the daisy chain plug on my Cooler Master Sickle Flow, but the, the hole for the cable is just not big enough for any fan that I own except for Cooler Master fans. I did find an ARGB extension cable which was able to make contact with the pins, though I was never able to physically plug it in because it, it is just big. So in general, I would say that this is intended to be used solely with Cooler Master devices, but by using a splitter or a bit of pushing, you will be able to make it work with everything. Okay, even though I really enjoyed the Master Plus software, there is one thing that I enjoyed the most about it, and it is the fact that you don't need it. Just hook up the 3-pin coming from the splitter into your motherboard 3-pin header and boom, ARGB. And this compares very, very well to what NZXT offers with their CAM software. Sure, both applications are very much okay for the task, but Master Plus can be ignored and the RGB can still be controlled with your motherboard software, which is not the case for NZXT, so really great included controller, but even greater because it's optional. Okay, now enough about the features, let's go to performance. We tested it on our test bench with a Ryzen 3900X at 4.3GHz and 1.4V vCore. Here we found that the Cooler Master ML240 Illusion performs pretty much the same as a Kraken X53 RGB and significantly better than a Blizzard 240 at full speed. Compared to every other cooler in our lineup, it holds on pretty well and managed to beat our best and biggest air coolers like the Arctic Freezer 50 and Dark Rock Pro 4. The only thing it couldn't beat are our 360mm all-in-one contestants, but that was kind of foreseeable. Slowly lowering the fan speed while letting the pump stay at 100% showed that the relation between the ML240 Illusion and Kraken X53 RGB did not change at all, as both stayed plus minus in the same spot the entire time. On the noise side, the ML240 clearly won the battle as it was around 1dB quieter every step of the way and reached an unmeasurable level at around 60% fan speed, while the pump of the Kraken X53 is always hearable in comparison.
Performance-wise, the cooler is not bad at all. It beat all of our 120mm all-in-ones, which is not always guaranteed, and it is able to compete with the really big ball leak in both cooling and noise. On a short side track, while doing all of our benchmarks, I had the impression that the whole cooler was aimed to be just quiet. So I tested if there was any performance left on the table, and as it turned out, there was. While hitting the cooler with two of our P12s, we got the temps down by 2 degrees C. Adding another two fans for a push-pull config lowered the temps another degree, making it almost compete with our 360mm liner. Don't get me wrong, as a product, as a whole, it performs very very well, but they absolutely prioritized noise and the whole ARGB Gen 2 stuff that comes with the Halo fans over raw performance. And in my opinion, usually that's a, a really really bad thing, but at least here it can still perform and it outperforms a lot of other coolers, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Just know that you could get another pair of Halo fans, slam them in and you would get much more. Okay, so what is good and what is bad? The RGB implementation is for me the biggest plus. I really enjoyed the Master Plus program and I was a bit shocked about how far I could push it and combine it with multiple other things. But the best point is not being bound. Just don't install the whole controller and you are still to go, which just provides me with a level of freedom that I really enjoy. The level of whiteness, sure the radiator and fans are white, which just makes sense, but they also included white splitters, white tube sleeves, and once you set the light to be white, just be prepared for a very blinding experience. The performance is really okay, the fans are not noisy at all, and especially the pump is dead silent at full load, and the quality is Perfect, everything is sturdy, well built, nothing wiggles, and overall the cooler was just a very pleasant experience. On the negative side, 400mm long tubes should be the norm for 240mm all-in-ones. Sure, I have a backup plan for my benchmarks, but if you come with a really big case and you want to install that thing in the front, you're just, you're just gonna have a hard time. And the last point would be the usage of proprietary ports. Why would you even add extra ports to every RGB device if you're going to immediately adapt it to standard 3-pin ARGB? I, I just don't get it. Just stick to the standard connector and, and you will be better. So who is this for? So to my surprise, the ML240 can handle a really big device like an i9 or R9. So as long as you are still in the consumer market, this will handle basically everything. So you are good to go. Right now, the ML240 Illusion White is available around $130 on Amazon US or around $115 Euros in Europe, which compared to the competition is a very acceptable price. Of course, I will leave all of the manufacturing and affiliate links down in the description below if you want to know more about it. But yeah, this was my take on the Cooler Master Master Nugget ML240 Illusion in White. At this point, I would like to thank Cooler Master for sending us over this beautiful all-in-one and if you want to keep watching, have a look at the Glacier 1 MP360. It is also a very good all-in-one. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.